Welcome to a video on graphing piecewise defined functions and the, and the goals of this video are to graph a piecewise defined function by hand as well as on the graphing calculator. So a piecewise defined function is a function whose rule changes depending on the value of the input or in this case the value of x. Here's an example of a piecewise defined function. You can kind of see why it's called a piecewise defined function because it has two different pieces or two different rules based upon the given value of x. If x is less than 1, we're going to use this function rule. And if x is greater than or equal to 1, we'll use this function rule. So to complete this table, when x equals 1, we're going to use the first rule because negative 1 is less than 1. So we'll replace x with negative 1. 2 times negative 1 minus 1 would be negative 3. When x is 0, 0 is still less than 1, so we use this rule again. 2 times 0 minus 1 would be negative 1. Now when x equals 1, we're going to use the second rule because 1 is greater than or equal to 1. So we'll have negative 1 plus 2, which equals 1. And then when x is 2, 2 is greater than or equal to 1, so we'll use the second rule again. Negative 2 plus 2 would be 0. Let's go ahead and see if we can graph this now. Now there are a couple of techniques for graphing piecewise defined functions. I think it's helpful when you're first learning how to do this is just go ahead and graph the first rule as y equals 2x minus 1. Once we graph this line, we'll go ahead and erase the part that we don't want. So to graph this line, we have a y-intercept of negative 1 and a slope of positive 2. So we'll go up to right 1. Now because I know I'm going to have to erase part of this line, I'm going to go ahead and make it dash temporarily. Now, I only want this line when x is less than 1. Here's where x equals 1. So we want everything to the left of this point. And since 1 is not included in this inequality, we're going to change this point to an open point. And again, we'll grab everything to the left because that's when x is less than 1. So we want this piece of the line, but we don't want the piece on the right, so we'll erase this. Now we'll graph y equals negative x plus 2. So we have a y-intercept of positive 2. And our slope would be negative 1 over 1. So we'll go down 1, right 1, down 1, right 1. And we'll sketch a line through these three points. Again, we'll make it dashed temporarily. And now we'll determine which piece of the line we want. We want the red line when x is greater than or equal to 1. So here's where x equals 1. And it is included on this red line, so we'll close the point in here. And from here, we want the line on the right side where x is greater than or equal to 1. So we'll go ahead and erase the piece on the left. And there's the graph of that piecewise defined function. Let's go ahead and verify this on the graphing calculator. If we press y equals, what we can do is enter in 2x minus 1 in parentheses, and then just multiply this by x less than 1, and it will only graph the appropriate piece. So we'll have an open parenthesis, x, to access the inequalities, we'll press second math, and we want option 5. Put a 1, close parenthesis, press enter. And we'll do a similar procedure for the second rule. So in parentheses, we'll have negative x plus 2 times x greater than or equal to 1. So second math, option 4. 1, close parenthesis, and now we'll press graph. So there's the first function rule, and there's a second, which matches our graph. We can also press second graph and determine function values if we wanted to. The initial table we had was negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 for x. The only thing we have to be careful about here with the table is that these zeros show that when x is negative 1, we're using function y1. This zero is an indication that this function would be false for these given x values based upon the inequality. Let's go ahead and try another one. 
Now, the more you know about functions, the easier these are going to be. Meaning if we want to graph y equals negative x squared minus one for the first rule, if you know that's a parabola that opens down and shifted down one unit, we can quickly make an accurate graph that would look something like this. This would be the vertex. It's going to open down. And again, if we didn't know how to do this, we could just pick function values. For example, when x is two, we would have negative four minus one, that'd be negative five. And there's a mirror image of this point on the left. So we'll graph this entire parabola. We'll make it dash though because we know we do have to erase part of it based upon the given interval for x. And we want this only when x is less than zero. So we only want this blue graph to the left of zero. It does not include x equals zero, so we have to change this to an open circle. And then we'll graph the piece to the left. And erase the piece to the right. So again, I think it's helpful to just graph the entire function first and then determine which piece you want. The second piece will come from the graph of y equals x squared plus one, which is y equals x squared shifted up one unit. So that should be fairly easy to graph. This would be the vertex. We'd have these points here. And then when x is two, we'd have positive five. And when x is negative two, we still have positive five. We'll make this graph dash temporarily. Now we want the second graph when x is greater than or equal to zero. So we are going to include zero on this graph and then the piece on the right, but we don't want the piece on the left. Let's go ahead and make sure it's obvious this is a closed point here. Let's verify this on the graphing calculator. So we'll type in the first rule, negative x squared minus one in parentheses, and then we'll multiply this by x less than zero. Second math, option five, zero. And then for y two, x squared plus one times x greater than or equal to zero. And graph. The only thing that we can't tell from the calculator is it's not very clear that this point here would be an open circle. So you have to be careful about that when you're using the graphing calculator to check your work. I think we have time for one more. Now this one has three pieces. Notice the second rule though is a point. When x is negative one, y will be positive three. So let's go ahead and graph each function and then we'll erase the piece we don't want. So we'll graph y equals negative x squared which is a parabola that opens down. Again, we could always make a table to find these function values, but the more you know about your functions, the easier this becomes. But we only want this graph when x is less than negative one. So here's where x equals negative one. Because of the inequality, it'd be an open point. Change that, an open point here. And we only want the piece on the left of negative one. So this small piece here and we'll erase the piece on the right. Next, when x equals negative one, y is equal to three. That's, that's just the point, negative one, three. So this point here is part of the function. And notice that when x is greater than negative one, we have this line, y equals x plus two. So we have a y-intercept of positive two, and we have a slope of positive one. So we'll go up one, right one, and make our line. Again, we'll make it dash temporarily. And we want the line when x is greater than negative one. Well, when x is equal to negative one, y would be positive one. So right here, we're gonna have an open circle that is on that line, and then we want the graph to the right. And we'll erase the piece on the left. Now you can go ahead and check this on the graphing calculator. It's gonna be very difficult to see this point on the graphing calculator but you can easily verify the piece on the left and the piece on the right. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching.